All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house and welcome back to the channel today. Look at this. I'm in the house with the Spyderco Capara here with me for a review. We're going to analyze the look, the sound and the feel of this bad boy, which comes with this uh, classic Spyderco um, uh, box uh, with uh, some information, of course, about your knife. But here you have your knife. There you go. Spyderco Capara. Um, uh, let's check the measurement because we have a 3.5 inch long blade. We have a 4.5, a little bit over, uh, inch long handle for a 8.3, 8.25 inch long overall knife. Uh, length for the knife, sorry. Bench made mini bug out and bug out. Yeah, no, they cannot do anything uh, with the uh, Capara. Maybe the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3 can do something to compete. Uh, yes, Paramilitary 2 is a little bit bigger than that. Better handle to blade ratio for sure on the Capara. And the Para 3 is right up here. Uh, I want to show you also like this guy over here that I got hanging around. That's the Bradley uh, version 2. Um, let me show you just a couple of uh, Chris Reeve knives that I I got a uh, small Sebenza 21, large Sebenza 31, uh, pretty much uh, we are very very similar size uh, in size with the um, with the large, uh, let me show you the BBM, uh, this is the Dr. Frankie's BBM, Nick Chuprin and Robert Kavik collaboration, uh, Hinder Knives XM18, and I want to show you just a couple of uh, another carbon fiber, uh, Shirogorov, this is the Tabargan uh, Axis Lock, uh, and carbon fiber inlays uh, for the Shirogorov Custom Division Neon and L, and just another couple, and that's it, uh, I promise. Hold Blade Work Spectre and uh, Haptic down here to attach the size of the Caparo, which is bigger than both of these two uh, holds. And here we have this pretty cool knife. Uh, retail price was $2.90, uh, made in Taichung, Taiwan, uh, designed by Philip, uh, Phil, uh, Alistair Phillips, sorry, Australian knife maker, named this um, uh, knife after the red stripe uh, spider, Australian spider. Capara is also like an alternative name. And in fact, you get the uh, red stripe right over here. That's a pretty cool thing uh, as the backspacer, which I believe is G10. Uh, and then we have... Uh, uh, a very interesting knife, guys, because, I mean, first of all, I love this uh, set of carbon fiber scales. Kind of like reminds me, in a, a little bit different, but the Sigma uh, handle, uh, it's kind of like reminiscent of that. Uh, but uh, this is very different, of course. Um, 3D milled carbon fiber scales. You get some uh, stainless steel liners. Uh, there's some nice chamfering going on around uh, the 3D milled scales. Uh, you have a large finger groove over here and one over here, which is kind of like acting as a a finger choil, it's not really a finger choil, but kind of for more advanced grip. Instead of that, you can actually use like that. So that's very good. Um, there's a G10 backspacer I was showing to you, which has a, a, a liner hole option uh, drilled through it, uh, through the scales, through the liners, and through the backspacer. Um, the blade is absolutely centered, safely recessed, and super uh, centered. That's pretty good. Um, also, we got uh, a very minimal uh, construction, two handled screws, one pivot screws, pretty straightforward. You can also check out uh, my maintenance video if you want to know how to disassemble and maintain this fella. Uh, this is a compression lock, so you, uh, um, you're going to have to disengage the lock from the top. And that's a good thing because the, uh, your fingers are will never be on the in the blade path. Like, for example, in a frame lock, you know, you have to disengage and then your finger is gonna meet the blade path uh, sometimes. Uh, in this case, no, you're just operating in the back. This guy's closing and it's super safe. And uh, it's pretty sturdy too. Um, also, like uh, you get uh, this wire um, frame, uh, let's say tip up carry only pocket clip. It is reversible. You can mount it on this side, but it's going to be tip up carry only. It's deep carry. So this much knife is going to be sticking out. It's uh, wired. So not my favorite design, but works perfectly. Look at the entrance uh, and exiting the ramp. They are going to do a nice job uh, paired with this uh, pretty cool tension. So you're going to be good to go with the clip. 
and then you meet this blade with a unique shape, kind of like Warncliffe uh, uh, modified sheep's foot kind of deal uh, with a, a thumb ramp. There's no jimping going on. You get your spidey hole, which is chamfered. You get uh, the belt grind lines uh, uh, going vertically in the primary bevel, creating this full flat grind, which is going to be super slicey. And then you have like kind of like 30% belly and straight edge. There's no sharpening choil, as you can see. From this angle, you got uh, to be careful when you reach this point when sharpening. Here you get like a kind of like a finger choil. It's good for the advanced grip, but I wouldn't really call that a finger choil. Uh, you get a lot of billboarding, Spyderco logo, Spyderco writing, CPM S30V steel, Taichung, Taiwan, Philips. Uh, so I mean, there is quite some stuff going on, but. Uh, Nonetheless, it's gonna uh, be like that, and that's nothing you can do about it. 0.117 for the stock thickness, and uh, behind edge, kind of like at this point, you're gonna get 0 0.019. So, not too shabby of a slicer. It's a, a full flat grind, a relatively thin stock, so that's gonna slice like very, very nicely. Pretty good for food prepping, uh, indeed. Then you get this combo like when you deploy the knife is uh, very subdued very low volume when you close it it's like <laughs> almost like inaudible very mellow very soft it's a very pleasant feel in the hand let's also check uh, the weight because it's not too heavy guys uh 3.35 ounces so not too shabby, right? For a 3.5 inch long blade, looking very unique. Um, the ergonomics are fantastic, I have to say. I can squeeze this thing, I don't feel anything. Nicely rounded off uh, pocket clip, no hot spots whatsoever. I can choke up a little bit more, it's very good. Uh, the lock bar is uh, uh, easy to access. You see, there's uh, like a nice indentation, but uh, because of the meat, of uh, my flesh is gonna be kind of like there. Maybe you can see from this perspective. So this is like the lock bar disengaged. Then I'm gonna get, uh, you see, up to the point where my finger is kind of like touching a little bit like here. It's not like um, uh, I would do like, for example, in the PN2, where you can actually access even more and then you see, like the, the blade is just gonna uh, smack up against the fingertip, but still you can get a little bit of that, but it's not like the end of the world. You can actually uh, get it locked, uh, closed up pretty easy. There is no jimping whatsoever. I would have liked uh, some jimping going on over here. Uh, you can do a nice reverse grip, uh, even a little bit more advanced. It's fine. It's not like the most comfy, but uh, it's doable. It's kind of like slippery because there's no texture. It's super smooth, um, the, the surface of this handle. So keep that in mind. Zero rattling, solid build, it's well put together. There's no blade play, no lock stick, no finger soreness, anything. Um, you get a very cool action when deploying this blade, guys. Look at that. It's it's very satisfactory uh, Like to, to, to use this one. Really, really cool indeed. Action is very, very good. Look at this smooth action, free falling, nice and fidgety, detent strength. Ooh, dialed in. It is very well uh, put together. There's no detent ball ramp, but we don't need it because it's so fidgety that there's not going to be any need for that. So, I mean, overall, this is a pretty cool knife, guys. A very unique uh, blade shape. Nice and comfy handle. I love the 3D-ness going on uh, on the scales. Uh, it's pretty comfy. I'm not a fan of the wire clips, but this works well. I love this uh, area here, like the sharpening choil missing here, but they made it up kind of with a finger choil uh, affair going on. Overall, I didn't think I liked this guy at the beginning because of the quirky look, but actually I can see its, uh, its usefulness and its purpose. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Stay tuned.